Okay, we're going to talk about um, a completely randomized block design for experimentation. We have talked about randomized, um, completely randomized experiments, and now we're going to talk about blocks. What is a block design? Well, a block is when you have a group of experimental units that are known to be similar. This is similar to when we talked about uh, simple random samples or stratified random samples. Now, those are sampling. This is experimentation. That is the main thing you have to kind of keep uh, the difference in. I'm going to change this right here. So we talk about experiments. OK. And with blocking, blocking, you notice in your experimental units that there are some similarities between them. And because of that, um, you want to probably have some randomized block design. Now, that separates blocks, uh, subjects to blocks, and then randomly assigns those treatment within each block. Okay, so you block everybody off, and then you randomly assign the blocks into different treatments. Because you assume that um, the blocks may offer um, some different uh, uh, conclusions or responses because of what they are. Now, another type of block design is known as matched pair, all right, matched pair design. Now, a matched pair is an experiment, experiment used to compare two treatments that use blocks of size two. The key thing in matched pair design, all right, pairs are size two, okay? Now, these two are very, very similar, um, have many different similar qualities, and what you're going to do is um, these two very similar experimental units are paired, and then they are randomly assigned the different treatments okay, that you have. So that is what we have when we talk about randomized block design. Let's go through an example, shall we? Sure. Well, here we go. We have, check your understanding of researchers would like to design an experiment to compare the effectiveness of three, all right, three different advertisements for a new television series featuring the work of Jane Austen. There are 300 volunteers, okay, available for the experiment. Okay, describe a completely randomized design. Okay, so we're gonna talk about completely randomized design to compare the effectiveness of the three advertisements. Well, in this um, completely uh, randomized design, we would have our 300 volunteers. And what we would do then is we're going to take these 300 volunteers and we notice that we have three treatments, okay? Three treatments, okay? And so we would we have treatment one. One, um, we would say um, one advertisement, so we call it add one, okay? And we would have treatment two. All right, that would be add two. And then we would have treatment three, which would be actually our ad three. And so these three different groups would see the different three different ads. And then we would ask them um, to rate how how much they wanted to see the Jane Austen movie. All right. And so at the end, we would have, all right, compare um, levels of excitement. I don't know how we're going to do this. <laughs> excitement to see movie, all right, to see the movie. And that is what we would do. Now, the key thing is that when we get to our treatments is that you need to have a random assignment. So we're going to randomly assign, assign, all right, 100 in this group, 100, and I just call this um, random assignment, all right, 100 in this group, and then a random assignment with 100 in this group. And so 100 would receive this treatment, another 100 would receive this treatment, another 100 would receive this treatment of the different ads, and then we compare them. And that's what we do. Okay? So now, if we wanted to change this up and talk about describe a random block design for the experiment, justify your choice of blocks. Well, in this case, um, what do we know? Do we know about this? Effect of three different ads, um, three volunteers available to so sale. What would be one block that we could do? Um, well, we could maybe block them into um, possibly gender. Because um, we're trying to think of what type of variable would maybe give them a preference of seeing this. Um, maybe uh, 
gender, maybe not, maybe not. Um, probably you can maybe see is that who has actually read Jane Austen books? Okay, Jane Austen as an author, so you could actually block them in the 300 volunteers into blocks of um, who has read. Oops, has read. Jane Austen. Okay. All right. And then you can have um, who has not not read Jane Austen. Okay. So maybe that would be a type of blocking. All right. Maybe that would be the best. So whatever you have here. Okay. Um, and I don't know how many people would be in this block. But you would have to figure out, okay, what of these 300 volunteers who have read Jane Austen, who has not read Jane Austen, of those 300 volunteers. So we'll just say um, whatever that is, okay, and we'll just call this n number of people, all right, and we'll just say this is 300 minus whatever n is. And so now what we're going to do is from those who read Jane Austen, we're then going to separate them into three different ads. So the treatment is we're going to do then a random assignment. I'm just call it RA of whatever we have here into um, add one. That would be our treatment one. Then a random assignment here of add two. Random assignment here of add three. Um, and the same thing here. Um, we would do a random assignment of those that did not read Jane Austen books um, of their author. And we would have add one. Then we have random assignment of add two. And then we would do random assignment of add three. And so from these, you can compare the results. All right. And from these, we would compare the results. All right. Let's spell compare, right? All right. <laughs> we have to compare the results. Compare. All right. We have to compare the results. And then we could take all the results and then compare um, these results from here. Okay, so then we can compare the final comparison, all right, of those that who read Jane Austen, who those that did not read Jane Austen. And that would probably give us a better indication of which ads would be more effective. Um, because if we all grouped them together, um, people that have known Jane Austen might be have a higher... Um, favorability rate of that because they really like the books because um, she's a popular author and then those that haven't they might have come in with no so they might have a different preference and that might skew our data all right or the responses so we're always thinking of how would that skew our responses okay and so we would split them up into these those 300 volunteers we'd split them up into these two different groups okay um, and then we would randomly assign whatever they are um, to three different ads, each one, and then we compare those results. All right, there. Now, why might a random des block design be preferred in this context? Well, as I said before, um, those that um, may have read the author may have a preferred. Have a um, have a uh, more favorable res um, response to ads. All right. Now, if you want to say just in more general, um, may have <clears throat> um, may have a different response. Right, different response to the ads than those uh, who have never heard or read the author. All right, and that's what we're talking about there. That's why a random design block design might be better in this case. Okay, and so we want to separate those out. 
All right, so that is what we have with randomized block design. The key thing is when you do a completely randomized, we're taking all the volunteers and we're randomly assigning them into each, evenly into each treatment. Here we have, we need to separate the volunteers into different blocks. And then from there, we have a random assignment to the different treatments. And we do this because we think that um, the blocks may have a different response than those in the previous block. So they may have a different one, maybe favorable, maybe less favorable. We just don't know. Um, but that would maybe skew our data and cause it not to be um, as good as it could be. All right. So I hope that helps you out on understanding the difference between completely randomized design and block design. Good luck and go bust in the rest of the problems.